Hello everyone, this is the 2 and 2 b Today I will be teaching how to build in Roblox for anyone who hasn't done it before. So first, let's get set up. To open up Roblox Studio, you press your Windows key, or if you're on Mac, whatever that key is called, and just search for Roblox Studio on your computer, and it should pop up. It installs right with Roblox, so you don't have to install anything else. Now. When you first open the application, at the top it will show a taskbar that does not look like this one. I, it's personal preference which one you want to use, but I prefer this one and this is what I'm going to be using in the tutorial. So if you want to switch to that one, click Tools, Settings, go to Studio, and click System Menu. It should be on a ribbon bar by default. Um, this change will happen once you restart Roblox, so or Roblox Studio, so go ahead and do that. And now let's get building. So let's just click base plate, start off. And here we are. Now you might notice um, this might not look quite the same for you as well. Um, this is, you can customize Roblox Studio how you with how you want to work. This is how I like to add it. The explorer off to the side here, the properties panel here, toolbox here. And basic, ob and basic objects here. Um, to open these up, you see these tools up here. This one is for insert objects, which is, I, I assume this is a toolbox, so toggle that on. Toggle basic objects on. Toggle on the explorer view and toggle on the properties panel. Okay, now that you have all that set up, we can start building. So, go over to Basic Objects. You can also go over to Roblox Sets and Bricks and just drag in one of these, but I'm just going to drag in a part for now. So just type in Part and drag it into the game, and here we are. So, let me teach the, the basics of how you should use your tools. First of all, up in the corner here, you see one stud grid, one fit stud grid, grid off. Um, when you're beginning, just start off with one stud grid. It makes your life a lot easier. Okay, so these tools up here are what you're going to be using the most out of anything. This is the drag tool where you can drag objects and you can also deselect by clicking off an object and selecting by highlighting what you want. You can also highlight multiple objects. If I were to drag in two bricks here, I can highlight them both and move them around. So let me just click this and press the delete key to remove it. And as you can see over here, you can see all the objects in the game. Also, over here you can also change different settings like how bright your game is, what shadows look like, toggle off, on and off outlines, just there's a lot of stuff that you can mess around with here that's pretty self-explanatory so I'm not going to go over it too much. Anywho, next is the move parts tool. This is very handy if you want to move a part very precisely. Moving it around like this gets you by 90% of the time but sometimes you just have to move it with this. Next is the resize tool, which is also something you're going to be using quite a lot. You just drag the little handles and you can resize the block in whichever direction you want. Now, if you want to, er, sorry. Now here's the rotate parts tool, which you'll use pretty often. There's actually a different way to do it besides this, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It's very similar to the resize tool. But another way you can do this is just by selecting the normal drag tool, um, dragging around the object and pressing R. R will rotate, T will tilt. So that's a quick little hot key there for doing that. Now over here is the collision check tool. This will basically make sure when it's toggled on that you don't, blocks do not go inside of each other. As you can see the more I drag this down, it just won't move. I toggle that off, it can go through the base plate. So that it really just depends on what you're building, whether you want to use that or not. Now over here, this is the lock tool. As you might have noticed, I cannot select this base plate. That is because it's locked. If I unlock it, select it, I can move it around, edit it, 
do anything like I could with this normal block here. It's treated just the same. But um, I don't want to do that. Here is another tool. It's the anchor tool. The anchor tool pretty much makes it to where the block will not be affected by gravity or any outside forces. So this base plate is not affected by gravity because it's anchored. However, this block is. If I were to select it and drag it up and press this little play button up here, this run button, it will run the game. As you can see, the block is affected by gravity. If you want to go back, you just click this little stop button and it returns you back to where you were. You can also click this button right here to just play the game in general, which might seem familiar to, to you. It's normal Roblox. So I'm just going to exit out of here. Uh, oh, here. Sorry. Uh, there's another way to get to this, and you just go to Tools, Test, and Play Solo. That's generally what I do, but anyway. Over here, we have the grouping tool, which is amazing. You will love it. So say you want to build something, like let me just quickly build a door. So I can build this door. Let's go down to the properties panel and um, change some properties of this door. We want it to be anchored. And let's and we want to turn off can collide. So now um, we'll walk through this door. Now I can just go up here and let's say I want it to be this color and be made out of hmm, wood planks. All right. So now I can hit this little play button again, and we have a door. Anywho, if you're making, say, a door with a doorknob, let me just copy and paste this. Resize this here, and we're going to make a little doorknob. We're going to go back into this properties panel. We're going to go down to ball. So now we have a little ball as the doorknob. So now we can select both of these objects and press group. Now it will be treated as one object, which is fantastic. You can rename this object by just going over to name and call it door. And you can do this with individual blocks too, but you can also do this with groups. If you press control C and control V, it'll copy and paste an exact clone of what you're doing. I'm pretty sure you can press control D to do two to duplicate. Yes, you can. However, it will duplicate on top of itself. Now, let's just... That's, those are pretty much the basic things that you're going to be using pretty often. Of course, there's this paint bucket tool, which doesn't work in the current update, which is so silly. So you have to change it in the properties, like I did earlier. Um, materials tool, again, I changed it in the properties, but this would normally work. And then surfaces, which do work, so you can change different surfaces, like a glue surface will stick to blocks. Weld surface, pretty much the same thing. And so on and so forth. Hinges, if I wanted to put this door on a hinge, I could do it that way, just by making a hinge object and having some sort of structure around this door. In fact, I will do that in, well, momentarily. Let me just go under here and, all right, we have our hinges. Now let's go back into the door. You can um, open the grouped door just by going in here. I can click the first object and then click the last object while pressing shift. And now I can edit the properties of both objects. So I'm just going to make can collide back to on. Now let's build a basic structure. This is... I've only really watched one YouTube video on how to build in Roblox, and it was one of the early ones they had on the home page in about 2009, I believe, when I was, uh, like, oh, when I was nine. And what was amazing about the video is pretty much if you could build what they did in the video and use all the tools that they did in the video, you can pretty much build anything you can imagine. And as a kid, building anything that you can imagine is just mind-blowing. So 
let's do just that and build the same thing uh, that that video depicted. So I'm just going to copy and paste several blocks with Control C and Control V. I'm, now here is a situation where I could move this precisely because as you can see I could not get this block quite where I wanted it. Then we can resize it. Let's go over here, select that color will do. And then over here we can select transparency. If you press 1 it's completely invisible. 0 is by default, it's completely opaque. I'm going to enter in 0.5. Now let's select all of these and make another group. Let's call it glass window. Now I'm going to copy and paste it. Select these two, copy and paste them. Select these, copy and paste. I think you see a theme here. Um, we're going to go over here, copy and paste, select all of these, go around over here. You can press WSD, to, by the way, to move around the viewfinder and hold right click to pan with your mouse. Forgot to mention that. So we'll head over here. Connect those together. Connect these together if I can. There we go. Now let's select all of these. Go over here. Rotate this around. And do one more copy and paste. And we have all of the walls of this building. Um, nearly. Let's go over here. Oh, we just need oopsie daisies. I uh, I set this up wrong. Let's just ignore this door for now. Just trust me. Um, hinges will work as long as there's a block connected to them. And in fact, I'll show it later. I'll I'll put this off to the side for now. Let me just make this building as it was originally intended. So we have all of this glass. Now we're just going to. Select them all, copy, paste, stack that on top, select them all again, copy, paste, make sure it's directly on top of one another. Originally when you copied and pasted, it did place objects directly on top of one another, one another but for some reason they, uh, they broke it, like they did with many things. In any case, that's a pretty good height for the building, now let's just Grab a part for the roof. I'm going to change the color over here. Just like so. And now we all we have to do is just add a door. Um, not that door. So let's select these two glass window groups and ungroup them. Now we're going to just Say delete this block, move this one out of the way, delete these two glass panels just to make a little makeshift door. And now let's go and play the place. Hopefully it doesn't fall down. Ah, see? So there you go. A lot of things can be built just with that very basic idea. And let me show you the, um, the door hinge. I'll just, um, would be the easiest way to do this. I'll um, have this levitate off the ground. Um, let me make sure that it is anchored. Actually, I don't want it anchored. Oh yes, I uh, will make sure it's not anchored. And um, to make sure that this doorknob sticks onto the door, I'm going to add that glue surface to the back of it. Just like that. Now I'm going to drag in another part just for the sake of it and place it on top and make sure this is anchored now when we go to play the game you'll notice that the door rotates along its hinge if you want to make the hinge on the side of the door you're going to have to connect two blocks together and um, put the hinge on that block on the side of the door it should be fairly simple. I don't think I'd have to explain that in great detail. Now, um, 
just to drive the point home on how to build pretty much anything that you can think of, of course, this is the basic type of building going on the grid set of one, but from these techniques, you should be able to figure out how to build things with the stud grid of one fifth and, and infinite, which basically means that it will not lock these onto the stud grid at all. It will move it around freely, so I can be in between studs, as you can see here. But I do not want that for now, but just to drive the point home, I'm going to make a small little classic, classical style Roblox building. This is actually what I pride a lot of my places on, is that I build things uh, the old-fashioned way. Makes me sound very old. It makes me feel very old that I've been playing this game for seven years and have never grown up in the meantime. But we're just going to use that same copy and pasting method that we did earlier. And as you can see, this is pretty much the same way I made this glass building, but I'm just making a slightly different structure. I'm placing bricks on top of one another. And all we do is paste, 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 and see, I got lucky. It's pasting them on top of one another. Okay, we'll do that. Breaking apart for the roof. Now, just like how you can select things in the Explorer view to um, change the properties of multiple objects, you can do the same thing in the game view by just selecting them all like that. Left mouse button. And going down over here, and let's say we'll make it green. Yeah, why not? All right, now we'll do the same sort of thing we did for the building and open up a little door so that you can enter this. I guess it's a looks kind of like a military fort with the color I chose. So once again, we can play. And before we play, actually, um, you can go over. I believe you can go over here too. You can type in spawn and drag in a spawn location. You can also go up here, go to game stuff, and you can select a spawn. Or a spawn of different color, or a team spawn, which um, uh, you don't have to drag any in these to make a team spawn, but you can change the settings here. I'd recommend you mess around a lot with this stuff. That's basically how I learned uh, how to make things in Roblox, and in my opinion, it's the best way than me just explaining the words that are in front of you. I'm pretty sure you can figure most of this stuff out, just like I did when I was uh, nine, yes. Okay, but you can drag in a spawn location, and instead of spawning up on top of that building like I was earlier, I click play, I'll spawn right on the spawn location. And if you create several spawn locations, it's random which one you spawn on. So I can create three here. I still spawn on, spawned on this one, but it's fairly random. And here's our little fort. So I hope this helps you get kickstarted into making things in Roblox because it's it's really relaxing. It's a very fun thing. It's considered a kid's game now, I guess, but you never outgrow Legos. You just never do. Anyways, thanks for watching.